Carlos Ramirez, owner of NVS Audio in Roselle, New Jersey. Today we're going to be reviewing the Cicada DSP amplifier, the DSP 125.4D and the CX 150.4D. We're going to do both amps at the same time because the amps are identical. They're the same size. The CX is about an inch shorter, but they're identical in power, so they fit in the same places and they're almost identical in price point. Um, I have no idea what Diamond Audio did to Larry Frederick, the owner of Cicada Audio, but um, he is coming after them with a vengeance. I have, I don't know what happened between them. I'm just assuming that it was something bad because Larry has built product that I feel the product's only purpose in life is to give Diamond Audio a hard time. So we have to start at the beginning. Um, Chris from Garage Bagger Stereo sent me over some samples um, and he wanted me to review the Cicada horn speakers when they first came out, so I did. I wasn't interested in becoming a dealer. It had nothing to do with the quality of the product. Larry Frederick is a super smart guy. He is one of my mentors and one of my teachers. He used to work for Hertz Audison and he used to work for Diamond Audio. When he worked for Hertz Audison Electromedia, he was one of my trainers. This dude is super smart. He's one of my teachers. Um, definitely one of the smartest audio guys I know. So when he came out with his brand, I knew it was going to be good. The issue is I like to strongly support every line that I'm a dealer for. So I don't just want to open up a line and be a dealer for a line and not spend a lot of money with that line. I want, if you spend a ton of money with a line, then when there's an issue, they pay attention to what you have to say. And if you're doing numbers and you're unhappy, they try their best to make you happy. It's just simple math. So I was already a dealer. I already carry Diamond Audio. So I have a ton of Diamond Audio in stock. The stuff sells itself, uh, especially the MP654 and 694. It's got a cult following. People just ask for it. So I stock it. I have all the part numbers in stock. So I felt that initially looking at the product line that the lines were too similar and it wouldn't make sense to carry both. Boy, did Larry prove me wrong. After testing the coax horns in the Cicadia lines, the CH series, um, the performance is really close to Diamond Audio. I'd say it, it, it's got a little more power handling. So... Of course, it plays a little bit louder, but it's the rest of the line that really opened my eyes. Then after doing my initial review, there's a couple things I saw wrong in the manual that was online. After Larry saw the video, he texted me an hour later and told me to check again that the manuals had been corrected. Before the DSP came out, he asked me if I felt there was anything that was lacking or missing in the DSP. Um, so we talked for a couple hours. I conferenced Saul in on the phone call. He runs the other shop for me. And then we discussed shortcomings with the DSPs that we're currently using. And Larry immediately addressed the issues before his DSP came out. And as soon as it landed on American soil, he sent me a prototype to test out. And sure enough, the things that we discussed were included in the software. Uh, one of the most important things is we're constantly dealing with turn on pops when we're using a factory radio, even with aftermarket radios, uh, turn on pop is an issue. So one of the DSPs that we like to use is the Arc Audio PSM and the Arc Audio had an adjustable turn on delay, but even that was too short. We've run into instances where we needed a 10 second delay. Larry included a 30 second delay inside the DSP software. So it works on the DSP amplifier, it works on the standalone DSP. And this is something that was not in there originally, or it was a much shorter. So now it's user adjustable. So if you have a pop after eight seconds, you can set the delay to 10 seconds in the software, super easy. There is no other DSP I've used that has a 30 second user programmable delay right in the software. So what's nice about this is you can have the entire install done. And as you're running through your test, realize there's a pop and you don't have to take anything apart. You could just extend the delay inside the software. Um, what he's doing with the harnesses that he makes available, he offers because 
A lot of people get confused when it comes to bridging, especially when it's an amplifier like this, so you're not sure if it's this way or this way. He offers plugs that plug into your factory speaker pods on the Harleys, and it's already bridged on the amplifier side. You can't make it any easier than that. So I had no choice. I had to become a dealer. Um, how many other companies do you know that you call for tech support and it's the owner of the company that gives you tech support? Um, the guy that actually designs the product. He cares. He cares about his company. He cares about his clients. So I really had no choice but to become a dealer. But um, I don't know what Diamond Audio did to upset this man. This man came out with a vengeance and it looks like he took the entire Diamond Audio motorcycle audio catalog and tried to improve on every single SKU that Diamond offers. Um, might, some stuff is very small. Some stuff is major. So I hope I don't get this dude mad because uh, he doesn't play fair. So um, here's the DSP 125.4. Here's the Diamond Audio. Micro 4. The amps are identical in size. Physically. The same size. Performance numbers are almost identical. 80 by 4 on the Micro 4. 70 by 4 on the Cicadia. Um, the Micro 4 in the owner's manual, recommends 4-gauge wire, but it only has 8-gauge terminals. That's an 8-gauge wire. So 4-gauge wire is overkill for an amplifier. It only produces five or 600 watts, but we like overkill here. We like using high-quality wire, and if the amplifier wants 8-gauge and we can feed a 4-gauge, we're going to feed a 4-gauge. Well, the only amplifier of this size that we've ever seen that takes four gauge wire directly in. That is four gauge wire, and that is an oversized connector. That is massive, and I love it. So, most 800 watt amps, we we generally don't see four gauge inputs until the amplifier does 1200 watts. Um, Sound Digital 800.4, uh, eight gauge. Sound Digital 1200.4, four gauge. Well, on the Cicada, 125.4, it's 4 gauge, and on the CX 150.4, 4 gauge. Um, both these amplifiers generate up to 600 watts bridge, 300 by 2. But um, Diamond Audio recommends that you use 4 gauge, which means you'll have to go out and buy adapters. Cicadia comes with 4 gauge inputs. They offer plug and play harnesses for every amplifier in the line. So you could do plug in rear speaker pod harness plug in uh, front fairing pods, stereo or bridge. They have an amazing array of harnesses available for all their product. So we put on the test bench and of course, I knew Larry was gonna do this. The amplifier does overrated power. We exceeded the 12 volt power rating and we exceeded the 14 volt power rating. So, both amplifiers are rated at 4 by 70 at 12 volts, 4 by 90 at 14 volts, 2 by 300 at 14 volts, and 2 by 218 at 12 volts. We tested 275 at 12 volts, 1K test tone. We got 33.3 volts AC before clipping, and we got a whopping 350 watts at 14 volts, 1K test tone, 38 volts AC. So it claims to do 300 watts, it did 350, and it claims to do 218 at 12 volts, did 275. So amp does overrated power. The way he priced the amp is very aggressive. The Diamond Audio Micro 4 V2 is $500. The Cicada CX 150.4 is $500. Now, the Cicada DSP amplifier, this amplifier is a built-in DSP. The same DSP that they offer in an uh, 8-channel is built into the amplifier in a 4-channel. Uh, you could stream directly to the amplifier. So this is going to be a hit on Road Kings 
where you can do the amplifier DSP built in. And if you bridge it, get 350 watts times two. Bluetooth streaming directly into the amplifier. You only have to install one part because most of the time when you do a Road King or when you do a bike that doesn't have a fairing, you have to do the Bluetooth streamer. You have to do the amplifier. Um, you have to do some sort of turn on. This lets you stream directly to the amplifier and it's got a DSP built in. So on Road Kings, we normally do, let's say you're doing a DSR-1. Then you have to do, let's say, uh, JL Audio Bluetooth streamer into the aux of the DSR-1, DSR-1 into the amplifier. So that's three components. You could just do the amplifier, has the Bluetooth streamer built in, has the DSP built in. So, and then the most impressive part, he made it only $550 retail. So for $550, you get the same power as the Diamond Audio Micro 4. You get the same footprint. You get DSP built in, and you get four gauge power inputs. And you get Bluetooth streaming capability. Wow. Um, I think this is gonna be the amp we start using in our stage one packages, because you can kill two birds with one stone. You're, if you bridge it, you get plenty of power. You get 300 per pod. It's got the DSP built in. So it's in, and it fits street glide, road glide in the factory amplifier location. So on the street glide above the radio and on the road glide under the radio. Um, it obviously fits in every application where you would put a diamond audio amplifier. And I think this is a really good start for the technicians or the DIY guys that are afraid to use DSPs because now you're technically getting one for free. So you can install it. Turn the DSP off if you don't want to use it, and then just use the amplifier the way you would a standard motorcycle amplifier. Or you can turn on the DSP features and start playing around with it, start learning it slowly. So you could set the high pass filter at a conservative 80 or 100 hertz, 12 dB per octave, play with the slope from 6 to 12 to 24, and see what it does to the sound. I mean, you, you can't hook it up wrong. It's built into the amplifier. It's literally built into the amplifier. It's got a Bluetooth streaming dongle right here. Lights up blue as soon as you connect to it. Um, so if you're scared of DSPs, this is a great place to start because you're technically getting the DSP for free. Um, if you buy a separate Bluetooth streaming module, it's 50 bucks. So there's your $50 price difference between the non-DSP amplifier and the DSP amplifier. I'm assuming Larry priced it this way so he could sell more of the DSP amplifiers so he can get people used to the DSP and the software and they don't have to be afraid of it. It's a very, very smart move on his part. I know he lost money on that portion of the amplifier because he's retailing this amplifier for 500 and this one for 550. There is no way this amplifier only cost him $50 more to build. It's physically impossible. So I'm assuming he's willing to lose a little bit of money to put the better technology in people's hands. So hopefully they'll use it and embrace it and then build a larger setup off it. Um, very impressed with the way this amplifier performed. And it's got a line out, line out so if you want to use this amplifier for the four speakers, then it's got a line out so you could slave a second amplifier or mono block to run mid-bass drivers or subwoofer. Super flexible. I'm very impressed. It did very well on the test bench. Um, and I knew it would. Like I know Larry. I know the way Larry conducts business. Larry is a no BS type of guy. So if he's constantly handing out bullshit cards, he can't really <laughs> be in a position to get called out and get handed a bullshit card. So Larry is not full of BS. Um, he's created a great product. Um, um, it was a no brainer to become a dealer for it. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot with his product this coming summer and spring. I have a bunch of other stuff to test. Uh, the review of his DSP is going to take me a little bit longer because he added so many features. It's going to take me a while to go through it. But something that he has built into his DSP, and I know there's a couple other DSP companies trying to do it, but I don't think they're going to pull it off as well as Larry's pulled it off. In the software for the DSP, it literally has drop-down tabs, so you can set the amplifier up to defeat the built-in Harley EQ. He's not the first company to do it. Arc Audio with the PSM did it. But the Arc Audio PSM one was only one option. He's actually got different options for different years. And 
you could see on the screen what the well you could see on the arc audio too but um his you can toggle through the software on the arc audio there was no software it was just pc software with the cicada it's a uh, smartphone based software so you can actually toggle through the different presets so um this is huge for the guys that can't get their bikes flashed or don't want to get their bikes flashed. I'm going back and forth trying to help two clients right now that are having issues that the dealer flashed it for two speakers, one amplifier, when that's not the proper flash. The proper flash is two amplifiers, eight speakers. That is the only flash that is flat. And then even if you use the Rockford flash, Depending on what DSP you're using, the level, the speaker level of the radio is too hot and it overdrives the input of the DSPs. It's a non-issue for Larry's DSP because it's set up to take high level or low level input. And it also allows you to adjust the level coming in, the overall level. And in the menu, you could actually see He's got presets, 14 and up, 19 and up, flashed, non-flashed. He even has presets. If you're using his horns, it will automatically tame the harshness of the tweeters. Uh, very ingenious, very good starting point. And he's uploaded, I'll put a link below, he's uploaded some files, I believe it's six or eight pages on his website that explains what every single audio preset does, where it makes the changes, where you should apply it. So it'll get you 70% of the way there as far as getting the bike dialed in to sound right, especially if you're using his amplifiers, his speakers. So um, my hat's off to you, Larry. You've done a great job. Um, this is amazing. Being able to build this amplifier in this price point, 500 bucks, 550 bucks for an amplifier with a built-in DSP, four gauge input, and a rock solid 300 plus watts per bridge channel is amazing. Um, purpose built, this amplifier is designed for motorcycles, uh, vibration resistant, uh, it's got good water resistance just the way it's designed. Uh, I could see us doing, and it's a good looking amplifier too. I could see us doing really, really well on the low power rider bikes with, uh, the, well, low power by our standards. Um, most of the bikes we do get two 800s, but this is right there. This would, two of these would be two 600s. Um, but the amount of flexibility and this is, I'm super excited. Larry did a great job. I'm super happy. I'm honored to be a dealer for his beautiful brand. And uh, I'm walk you over to the test bench and let you hear it. Run some numbers with you. Do you remember when we fell in love? I remember the worry. Do you remember how it all began? How could I ever forget? It's the first time. Do you remember? I can feel it. Yeah, yeah, yeah.